creative friends, it's Gwen. Today I'm going back to basics. I want to share with you a layout that looks complicated but really isn't. This layout is not just for new crafters so even if you have been creating for some time I think you'll enjoy this process and the clean and simple result. I'll be using Pink Fresh Studios Lovely Blooms collection and a cut file from my store cut to you. If you need full step-by-step -step instructions on how to upload and cut the file as well as my best tips and tricks for backing it I've made separate videos on that I'll leave links in the description box below. I'll also leave a link for the design that I'll be working with today as well as details on how you can grab a free SVG design so be sure to check that out. This is the perfect project if you want to put something together fast and still impress your friends and family. So let's get started. Here's a look at the super fun photo that I'm working with and I have gone ahead off camera and back the cut file because I want to get into this background. So because I'm keeping this beginner friendly, I'm actually going to use a technique that is super easy to do using Distress Ink. All I'm going to do is position the cut file where I want it to be on my finished project and you'll see there are two little pencil marks there down the bottom. That's so that I have a guide for where to place my ink. Using a brush I'm going to apply the ink with circular motions on the background and the key here is to start off lightly, gently and build the colour up over time in layers. Remember it's much easier to add more colour than it is to try and lift colour away. If you're not sure how you're tracking you can always take the cut file and place it over the top of the ink and just get a gauge of how deep the colour is and the look that you're going for. This is the perfect background if you're an absolute beginner with Distress Ink because you've got a lot of control over the outcome. Once you're happy with the background you can add the cut file back on top. I have secured the title here at the bottom and you might have noticed that I used my T-square ruler to make sure that it was nice and straight. Taking a little bit of extra time to make sure things are lined up correctly actually ends up in a much more professional looking end result. Trust me when I say the devil is in the detail. If you're not sure where to find a T-square ruler I'll leave a link in the description. You'll notice here too that all of the elements are very centered on the page so I am keeping that in mind when I am placing things. On my T-square ruler I look at that six inch mark. I know that that's the center and I want to line up everything to that center point for this particular layout. To glue things down I like to use my ATG tape roller because that tape is actually very repositionable. Once I am really sure about the position of something I do like to then go back and add a liquid adhesive. So now that my title is locked into position I'm going to center the two photo elements directly above it. A centered layout design just like this one is super easy to replicate and that's why I'm using it for this particular project. Of course I've pulled out my trusty T-square ruler and I'm going to make sure that everything is perfectly straight and right there is where I'm going to position my photo. They say once you know the rules you can break them and that's what I'm doing from this point on moving forward on the layout. I'm moving away from that centered point and everything is now going to be balanced left and right. The photo is slightly to the right because I want to make sure not to cover up the L in the cut file there on the left. I want to mention here too, yes this is a very specific cut file and a very specific photo but everything that I'm talking about will apply to any layout that you make. You can replicate the cut file title with some large alpha stickers and then even use just squares of pattern paper for the two blocks that are centered above it. I'm going to build out some clusters now and I want to add a few details to the top right hand corner so I am I'm going to go with that sticker that says today. I've worked with those before and I found that they work best when they are flat on a background so I am going to nestle it in up the top there. I've also added a tag on the left of my photo and quite a large floral die cut. 
that cluster there is actually going to be the main cluster and that will balance out the L on the left there. Another thing you may have noticed is that quite a lot of that die cut is actually under the photo. I get asked a lot about how I build out clusters and that's actually one of the things that's possibly the hardest to accept. When we get all of these really pretty supplies we don't want to cover things up but to get really layered, put together looking clusters, there is quite an element of that to it. If it helps, know that you can fussy cut the elements out that will be hidden under your photo if you want to save things. Sometimes I go to that trouble, a lot of the times I don't bother. Now I did want to show you this little trick here. What I do is position all of my elements first and then just gently lift up the edges to apply the glue. I don't lift everything back off of the page to add glue. I found when I did lift everything off, I could never get it back the same way that I had it in the first place. So for me, it's much easier just to hold it in place and put a little bit of glue around the edges to secure it down. And while we're talking about glue, always use less than you think because when the papers get smooshed together, yes, smooshed is a term, uh, when they get smooshed together glue will ooze out so you don't want that that doesn't look very nice so yeah use less than you think you need I'm now at the point in the layout where all of the larger elements are placed I always work largest elements through to smallest elements and now I'm looking at adding some details now is also the perfect time to add in your textural things. So I'm going to add in some puffy stickers. By adding the larger floral on the right, I'm building out that cluster because I've already decided that that cluster is gonna be my main cluster. But I am going to balance that with a smaller floral element on the left. Another really great way to help your layout feel really put together is to repeat elements. So I actually didn't have to of exactly the same thing on the puffy stick sheet but I did have two flower elements that were in that same shade of pink so I'm replicating that little pop of pink in all of my clusters. I also found this very sweet little circle element that's from the chipboard sheet so that's another texture so I am going to add that. Next I'll check out the stickers in the collection. I just go through all of the elements that I have and I thought this would be perfect for balancing out some of of the blue. So I've got the blue in the word official and she is wearing blue jeans but I thought you know what it's nice to have three points in a layout, three points of colour, three embellishment clusters, three is like a magic number for scrapbooking. So I'm going to find a home for this little blue tab. I also wanted to leave in a lot of this audition process. I do this with a lot of the elements that I add. Most of the time that gets edited out of the video. So as a beginner or someone who watches a lot of YouTube, you might think that my pages come together really quickly. That is not the case. I love to audition all of the things in all of the places. This layout, as an example, took me around 45 minutes and I've edited it down to a 10 minute video. I'm telling you this so that you know that that's part of the process. And in fact, that's one of the parts of scrapbooking that I really enjoy. So don't be discouraged or get frustrated if this part of the process takes a little bit longer. Things are getting serious because I'm gluing stuff down and I need to be reminded, I need more glue. I am almost out. I'd love to know in the comments below too, what part of this video has been the most helpful for you? I do read and reply to every comment, so I'm up for a chat. It's time for some close-up images so you can see all the details. Thanks so much for being here, my creative friends. If you like the way that I scrapbook or the way that I chat about the way that I scrapbook, I would love it if you give this video a thumbs up. One of the first skills that you'll need to master as a paper crafter is fussy cutting, and that can be quite tricky at first. That's why I made this video right here. It's full of my best tips and tricks for getting a professional result. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, bye.